Am I right that there is no sweeter sound to a canner's ear than... <laughs> I mean, any time that I can take advantage of a store sale or pick up boxes of produce or seconds from the farmer's market or create recipes that you just won't find in a store and turn them into shelf-stable ingredients that make meal time even easier is a win. Now, there are a few exceptions, but you can can almost anything, which is the best problem I've ever had to deal with. This is why I always need new jars and why I will hunt you down if you do not return them. Y'all know I struggle with OCD. Obsessive canning delight. In just a single canning recipe book, you're going to find hundreds of recipes recipes, showing you how to turn your fruits, vegetables, and meats into soup, sides, and main dishes, which can be overwhelming. I mean, how do you determine if you or your family will like it and what you're going to do with it after it's on your shelf? Thanks to my good friend Leanne over at Mennonite Farmhouse, you're in luck. She's corralled a collaboration of canners you likely already know and others you've got to meet, where we share five things we will and won't can again. If you haven't met Leanne, you must. If good old fashioned hearty cooking, canning, and baking make you weak in the knees, you'll find it hard to get up from her table. I can't tell you how valuable the original series of this collab was for me when I originally started canning. In fact, it was one of my very first videos that I posted here on YouTube. If we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start canning and preserving your own ingredients right at home and show you ways to use your home can pantry and meals your family will love. The candy recipes that I share are tested and approved. In each ingredient video, I show you how I'm using my home can goods to give you multiple meal ideas for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then we debrief in my kitchen and talk about canning safety and recipe tips. I also offer a printable of the recipe and a full blog post straight to your inbox so that you don't have to come back to the video or worry about missing them. Now let's get into five things that I will absolutely can again and and five things that I won't and why. So in the list of the five things that I am going to can again, I'm gonna give you a soup, jam, fruit, relish, and a sauce. Now, if you're a returning friend, you have seen these recipes on the channel. First up is cranberry steak sauce. When you take toasted bread layered with melted white cheddar cheese, slide a fried egg and crispy bacon on top, but add this zesty cranberry steak sauce with a dollop of guac, you've really packed a breakfast sandwich full of flavor. This sandwich burst with the sweet tart cranberry flavor that was meant to mingle with bacon, warm bread, and cheese. I often take slow cooker cranberry meatballs and little smokies to church potlucks. Both kids and adults love it. I'm telling you now that this sweet cranberry glaze was made for meatballs and smoked sausage. Paired with home fermented sauerkraut, this meal is a winner every time. Add more moisture, flavor, and nutrition to your burger prep by dolloping your patty with this cranberry sauce. Paired with melted cheese, good gracious, this burger is addictive. Avoid getting stuck in a bland or boring burger routine. With this sauce, you'll infuse caramelized onion flavor, a bit of spice from the chili flakes will add, and the mouth-watering combination of cranberry and pineapple goodness. All right, so the second thing that I will absolutely can again is carrot cake jam. Canners, you know this is special because I use the quilted jars. Carrot cake jam is a memorable dessert experience that's the perfect switch up for icing on your cinnamon rolls. But don't stop there. Ditch the syrup and go with carrot cake jam for a new spin on other breakfast favorites like pancakes and waffles. The warming spices from the nutmeg, cinnamon, and honey in this recipe pair perfectly with goat cheese and bacon while lending moisture when it's rolled into chicken breasts. After pair and searing, use your carrot cake jam as a glaze to add a complimentary and hefty sweet flavor that can't be beat. And speaking of toppings, this jam makes the perfect glaze for ham. Even weeknight meals can feel fancy without the fuss with jars of carrot cake jam on the shelf. If you're in a pinch and don't have ready-made marinade or barbecue sauce on hand, you'll love using your carrot cake jam to infuse flavor and keep things moist. It's a filling your family will truly enjoy. It probably goes without saying that this would be the perfect topping you'll reach for to spread on top of ice cream or mixed into Greek yogurt. Mmm, talk about treat yourself. 
Better yet, it's a quick snack option when spread on top of peanut butter and graham crackers served with a glass of cold milk. All right, we have more quilted jars. And actually, y'all, I just canned this for the first time this summer, and I didn't put up enough. I mean, I've got a ration like, how many do I have downstairs? I maybe only have like eight jars of this. Oh, I'm getting nervous. But um, oh my goodness, it is zucchini relish. Zucchini relish is seriously an underutilized breakfast ingredient. You must try making bacon relish and cream cheese croissant pinwheels this weekend. With just four ingredients and a pan, you can create the perfect breakfast or brunch treat in minutes. <laughs> A classic chicken sandwich just isn't the same without this relish. A zucchini relish chicken sandwich is a go-to meal that my family and I rave about and you must try. Better yet, it cooks up quick. When you go for your first bite, you'll quite simply fall in love with how the pre-buttered bun, relish, and panko crumb fried chicken both combine and contrast to make this umami flavor even more stimulating. All right, so the fourth thing that I'm going to can again is French onion soup. French onion soup on a cold winter morning is a must, but so is a breakfast French onion strata, which is so easy to make, especially the night before. Use up soon to be stale bread and make it savory by heaping this soup with whisked eggs, seasoned with cheese and herbs. tell me you've had a French onion soup meat roast sandwich. If you haven't, darling, what are you waiting for? It'd be the most fork tender and flavorful pork roast sandwich you've ever had. I'm not kidding. I add home canned pickled slaw and from scratch mayo for a sandwich that eats like a meal. Another favorite is bourbon and bacon chicken. The addition of French onion soup takes this decadent dish over the top for a meal that's a weekend or weeknight pleaser every time. absolutely can again are honey orange slices. Preserving the unbeatable fresh taste of oranges that marinate in warming spices and honey is a treat. I made a delicious open-faced honey orange slice breakfast sandwich that spreads toast with vanilla infused ricotta, sliced honey oranges, and crunchy pomegranate seeds. Mmm, that was good. Having orange slices on hand to top on meats like fish, ham, and chicken only takes minutes when the work of slicing is already done. Plus, because they are simmered to softness and honey, the rinds become an edible part of this recipe that you'll enjoy eating.
All right, let's talk about what I'm not bringing back. So one of the sections in my canning journal is called my will do's, won't do's, and wanna tries. Yeah, you heard that right. And as the name implies, it's a way for me to have a record of what's working or not in my pantry, as well as the recipes that I'm curious about canning in the future. Determining what you will and won't can is something that every canner should give serious thought to. So whether you use a spiral notebook or download this canning journal, which you can reuse every year and print only the templates that make sense for you, I'd encourage you to use some type of record keeping system because canning is an investment of time and money that can absolutely allow you to eat more healthy, deliciously, and cheaper. But the best way to manage your inventory is to know what you have, how to use it, and a general good idea of how much you need to preserve so that you don't have too much of one thing and not enough of another. I've been there before and it's a learning curve that you could absolutely avoid repeating if you use a simple tracking system. I'm not gonna can asparagus. But let me share with full transparency that about two years ago, I shared that when I canned it, I actually enjoyed it. And yes, canned asparagus is soft. Uh, it's definitely softer than your canned green beans. But at the time, I thought, uh, you know, it's just good to have it in some type of preservation form. Interestingly, on that video, I remember getting a comment from someone that said, oh, Cassandra, I can't do it. Canned asparagus is just way too soft for me. And I didn't disagree with that because, yeah, it's it comes off or it comes out very, very soft. But if you haven't had fermented asparagus, that's how you get around asparagus keeping its crunch. I hope that's not bending the rules of the collab. I mean, but technically I'm not, right? Just because I won't can it doesn't mean I won't find a way to put it in a jar. All right, so I'm being a little silly, but let me give you some back story on how I even came to fermenting asparagus. It was March of 2020. See where I'm going? And I reluctantly tried it just so I could extend my canning lid inventory. Now what really did me in was when I saw this magazine at the grocery store. And I am not the kind of person who picks up anything in the checkout line, but how could I resist? And I saw this recipe for spicy rosemary pickled asparagus and we tried it and loved it. And even more than that, I really enjoyed just being able to pop in, you know, a few cloves of garlic and whatever spices I have on hand. I mean, sometimes it's the, um, everything about the bagel seasoning, fresh herbs that I had grown in my garden, like sage. And it was the same, it's the same vegetable, but you could always just change up the, um, the flavorings and it's so good. So actually here's some that I am fermenting right Right now. All right, so this might be a little too much for you, but I am going to go ahead and like it's still crunchy. It's really good. Now in this recipe, they actually, oh, I was saying that they blanch it, but there are other recipes that I use and I don't. It's raw and there's even more of that crunch and ugh. It's so good. I did try canning celery and yeah, I don't know why. For the same reason as asparagus, no, not gonna do it again. It just becomes way too soft and celery is something where you really need that crunch or at least something. I mean, canned celery just, it really dissolves, but I will absolutely ferment it. Y'all, in the video that I made on the guide to uh, fermentation, there is this recipe called celery stuffing and oh, it's so good. It is so good. It keeps its crunch. Uh, it's fermented celery, which doesn't look, smell, or taste like a ferment. It keeps its crunch and the sage that you use, like the actual fresh herb, oh my goodness, it is so good. Actually, I think fermented celery is probably one of my, it's one of my favorite ferments. One, it's just so easy. And two, it really does retain its crunch. So while I will not can uh, celery, I will absolutely ferment it. All right, so another thing that I'm not going to can, at least not for this season, are sweet potatoes. And, you know, they just come out a little bit too soft where if I'm actually going to use them, it's going to be in a sweet potato mash. But I don't know, I just, and then there was still something that was a little just off about the flavor of the sweet potatoes and a number of other canners in uh, previous uh, videos that I've watched have shared this, but I want to get it right. You know those recipes where you can and you're like, but I really want this to work. Um, so I'm in no rush. Uh, the potatoes that I get, uh, I store them really well and so they keep. Hopefully you've picked up on my trend. Um, so I'm not going to can them again, but I'm going to, yes, I'm going to ferment them. 
They're so good fermented. Who knew? So I actually have some ugh, that I am fermenting right now. So this is a recipe that I got from uh, fermented vegetables and I love it. So basically, I forget the actual like recipe name, but it's um, red bell peppers, onions, sweet potatoes, probably like turmeric, cayenne, and it keeps its crunch. You have probiotics and it's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous to put on so many things. I mean, I will just eat this though as a side because the flavor is so good. This is probably, these are three quarts. Uh, I probably used maybe about 10 small sweet potatoes, but yeah, so I so while I will not can sweet potatoes, I will definitely ferment them and you should try it too. So another thing that I'm not gonna can again are cranberries, uh, whole cranberries. And the reason is, is it's the form that they're in. It's just not something that I was getting a lot of utility out of. And so it's just my preference to use them in the cranberry steak sauce that I made or, oh, I honey fermented cranberries. I have that recipe on my blog. It's delicious. They are delicious that way. We love using them in oatmeal toppings or just spooning them um, uh, in our smoothies. So fermented cranberries are amazing. I also like doing a sweet and spicy cranberry sauce, but just whole berries, I didn't find myself really reaching for them um, as much as I would have liked, so I won't be bringing those back in that form, but I'm gonna have cranberries on the shelf. So another thing that I'm not going to can are whole blueberries, and it's pretty much for the same reason as the cranberries. They were just in a form that I wasn't using as much, but, but I did make this blueberry maple conserve it's delicious with that. Uh, I think I threw in some pecans in there. It's another recipe that's uh, here on the channel. And I found so many ways, again, to use it uh, at breakfast, which, you know, some of the obvious ways at lunch and dinner with chicken. Y'all, it just, the conserve, blueberry conserve is amazing. Um, but yeah, bl blueberries, they just get too soft. The time that you will spend processing them, which I mean, it's not a long recipe, but you're still gonna use your jars, so that's locked up with something, and you know, you're using your lids. Uh, it's just easier for me to throw a couple of them in the freezer and I'll use them that way, but I don't need to keep whole cranberries on the shelf. Don't forget to click the link to start getting canning recipes straight to your inbox. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.